Sasha's eyes widened, her color drained. The, the Warland? Yes, Actual said, handing her one of the suits. I've called it Warground, but Warland or Battlefield or whatever fit as well. Where the war was? Sasha's stare was locked on the opposite door. Yes, well, a small part of the war, Actual replied. The entirety of the war was much larger than what we're about to see. He went over to the door with little regard to Tara and Sasha not yet having the headgear on. They scrambled to get them on, Sasha with a bit more panic. Actual unlatched the lock, then pushed the door up, revealing an empty room that was about half the length of the first before another identical door. Light brown powder was on the floor, mostly around the far door. The powder showed faint tracks in it, some from feet, some from wheels. Now fully suited up, Tara stepped into the newly opened space and spread out her arms. Observe, she declared through the muffling of the mask, the horrors of war. Very funny, Tara, Sasha said, sounding relieved. This is just a... Actual heaved up the other door, revealing the wastes. Unimaginable width and breadth, a floor that seemed broken and barely able to hold itself together. A ceiling that stretched savage smears of colors from the edge of oblivion right across to the precipice of nowhere. Tucked in the edge of that nowhere was a light beyond reason that bled into the scant figment of reality that sprawled before them. Tara knelt to touch the fractured floor. It was hard, and at the same time, edges of the pieces wiped off, becoming the same powder she had seen just inside the door. The floor seemed to go on forever, with the walls too far to be seen. Or maybe the impossibly high ceiling with all these colors tapered down at some point to meet the floor. Could a person walk to the edge of... Sasha screamed, fell to her knees, and vomited in her mask. Taking a moment to realize what had just happened, Tara looked away from this unthinkable endless room and rushed to Sasha's side. By that time, Sasha was crawling back inside blindly. Vomit dripped from her mask onto the floor as she sobbed and gagged. Once Actual had drawn the outermost door shut, Tara got Sasha's headgear off. Sasha grabbed onto Tara, still shuddering. Sasha, Sasha, it's okay. That room is closed off now. You're safe. Tara pulled off her own headgear and held Sasha tight. Actual took his off. That, that's a new one, Actual said. You're okay? You were never in danger in the suit, and the enemy was pretty far. Sasha was slowly settling down, but had no interest in anything beyond hanging onto Tara. I didn't see any enemy, Tara said partly to comfort Sasha, partly to ask Actual about it. That bright light far to the right, Actual answered, at that distance, the radiation it dumps at us isn't that strong. Tara looked at the door and back to Sasha. What did it do to her? I don't think the enemy did that. I've seen people react in very different ways to seeing that room for the first time. Once was kind of like that, but without throwing up. Sasha spat out one of the last bits of vomit and mumbled, I'm going to dig a hole to get further away from that than engineering. No wonder the facility exists. Tara wanted to tell Sasha that it wasn't that bad, but in all honesty, Tara hadn't gotten a good enough look at it all to form an opinion. It was also difficult to argue with the severity of Sasha's reaction. Actual knelt down by Sasha and Tara. Are you going to be all right? Kinda, kinda want to go home, Sasha said, starting to take off the rubber man suit. Upon realizing the mess she'd made of it by throwing up, she stopped. Then she noticed that she got some of it on Tara. Oh, oh my, I need to wear this in the shower and just, just hose off everything. Oh, I'm sorry, Tara. Shut up with the sorry, Sasha. You're still trembling. Sasha's eyes went wide again, and she shot a hand out towards the door. Did you see that? By now, Messenger had rejoined them. It didn't go well? With a sigh, Actual stood and faced Messenger. No, 
Can you take her to the shower? The head engineer and I still have to address the conduit we need. Sasha darted her stare between Actual and Tara. You're going back out there? Actual and I have been out there several times, Messenger offered, even when the enemy was much closer. With proper protection, we've withstood its attack for nearly an hour before we felt the need to withdraw. What kind of attack? Tara asked. Radiation, of course, Actual answered. It hovers up by that ceiling far out of reach and spews radiation in every direction. An odd radiation that doesn't pick up on Geiger counters. Eventually, even with the suit on, if it's close enough, you feel it a bit. It can get quite uncomfortable, but after retreating, the effects usually fade quickly. Once I was in it for far too long and... Actual gestured towards Sasha. But you said it was unlikely that the enemy did that to her, Tara cried. For as distant as it was, and for it to happen so quickly? Actual frowned at Sasha, more specifically at her condition. If this is a more severe case like what I've seen before... Six? Messenger asked, referring to a dangerous subject who'd been offered exile in the past and had a similar reaction. Well, there's a lot we don't know, but the immediate fact remains we need to install that conduit. He looked to Sasha with compassion in his eyes. Go with Messenger. Take a long shower. Calm your nerves. Sasha picked herself up. She looked to Tara, then she looked to the door. You're seriously going into that room? Her voice trembled slightly. Her eyes began to well up again. I'll be fine, Tara replied softly. I'll have the friggin' actual with me. Actual chuckled to himself. His advanced years did not present the most intimidating visage, but it was known among the engineers that actual was the one who'd taken care of that murderer running around a few years ago. Tara gave Sasha a big hug, ignoring any threat of more vomit getting on her rubber man suit and headed to the door with Actual while refitting her headgear. At a healthy distance, Sasha lingered long enough to see Tara and Actual open the far door again. Those alien colors were still out there, that all-devouring emptiness. She stared at it, feeling her trembling gradually increasing, staring at that beautiful void. She felt a scream building in her chest. It came only as a startled gasp as Messenger's hand rested on her shoulder and snapped her out of her trance. Sasha. Shower. Yeah, I... They're safe? Safe, shielded, and getting safer by the minute as the enemy gets farther and farther. What if it comes back? It won't.